Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I. V. DeGangie doing political commentary today for the media speaks. Do me a favor, hit share, hit subscribe, hit like. All of those things help the show grow immensely. And as you know, I'm trying to get a camera and a number of things that I need to make the show better. And uh, you can help me, um, so please do. Meanwhile, I'm going to do exactly what it is that you tune into the show specifically for, and that is to head straight into the news of the day. Um, I debated on what to lead with today. A lot of good stuff incoming, but this was the one here from Reuters that I decided to go with because it proves Trump right. Mexican president says he's willing to meet with Trump. And you're probably going to ask, how does that prove Trump is right? Well, I'll tell you. Um... He said, and I'm paraphrasing here, that what you do is you put the deal on the table that you want. Then, of course, the person is going to say no, swear at you, cuss at you, say the deal is off, and you leave. You, you don't keep making a bad deal, to use the uh, John Kerry analogy. And John Kerry could have benefited the nation a lot by walking away from Iran, and he didn't. Well, of course, Mexico had uh, ex-leaders cussing at us, and Trump stuck by his guns and said, when they see that it is in their economic interest to go ahead and gain acceptance to the fact that this wall is going to happen and that they are going to pay for it, the way it's going to start is they are going to slowly warm up to the idea in order to save face. Well, what are we seeing here? Exactly that. Mexican Presidente Enrique Pina Nieto, Nieto said on Tuesday that he was willing to meet with Donald Trump months after comparing the Republican presidential candidate to Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini. Now, what's interesting here is that Donald Trump is not a socialist nor a fascist. Um, the only socialist in the race, to be fair, is uh, was Sanders and may now be Jill Stein. And even she's not a full-fledged socialist, with uh, which Adolf Hitler was. So the comparison makes no sense, for one thing. But I go on. Yes, I would meet him, Pino Nito said, referring to Trump in a pre-taped television interview broadcast on Tuesday night. I have never met him. I can't agree with some of the things that he has said, but I were absolutely... Be I will be absolutely respectful and will seek to work with whomever becomes the next president of the United States. Trump has sparked outrage in Mexico with his campaign vow to build a wall along the southern U.S. border to keep illegal immigrants and to make Mexico pay for it. Now let me ask you a question, friends. Why does it make the average Mexican citizen so very angry that Donald Trump wants to build a wall along the border? when Mexico has, in fact, done the exact same thing to the border with Guatemala beneath it. Why? Because they were, and they believed that they were being overrun, remember? And yet, now, you know, it's perfectly okay. Well, let's look at the immigration laws that Mexico has. There will be no special bilingual programs in schools. All ballots will be in the nation's language. All government business will be conducted in our language, that is to say Spanish. Non-residents will not have the right to vote no matter how long they live here. Non-citizens will never be able to hold public office. Foreigners will not be a burden to the taxpayers. They will get no welfare, no food stamps, no health care, or other government assistance programs. Any burden will be deported. Foreigners can invest in this country, but it must be an amount at least equal to 40,000 times the daily minimum wage. If foreigners come here and buy land, options will be restricted. Certain parcels, including waterfront property, are reserved for citizens naturally born into the country. There's two more. Foreigners may have no protests, no demonstrations, no waving of foreign flags, no political organizing, no bad-mouthing the president or his policies. This will lead to deportation. And 10, if you do come to this country illegally, you will actively be hunted and when caught, sent to jail until your deportation can be arranged. All assets, that is to say your money, your game, yo-yo, will be taken from you. 
These are the immigration laws of Mexico. So when the average Mexican citizen says that Donald Trump is like Adolf Hitler and he's unfair and he's racist, um... Oh, epic... It seems by that would be uh, Mexicans. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to move on here, friends, with the article, I should say. In the Mexican newspaper in March, Pino Nito said Mexico would not pay for the proposed wall under any circumstances, likening Trump's strident tone to the World War II era dictators, of course, which we've already mentioned. He has absolutely nothing in common with. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to what I almost made the lead story, because I think in many ways it is just as interesting. It amazes me that people do not know this name, George Soros. People do not know who this is. And it's funny because he's one of the richest men in the world and he controls a lot of your life, whether you know it or not. It's the Daily Caller. Soros paid Al Gore millions to push aggressive U.S. action on global warming. In other words, Gore has known all along that there is no man-made climate change. He is a bought and sold politician and he made a fortune by selling you this lie and getting us into the U.N. agreement, which we've covered on earlier shows is more about control than it has anything to do with science. The science is uh, against global warming, not for it. Uh, look up the works of Lord Monken if you doubt me. Liberal billionaire George Soros, among others, liberal billionaire George Soros gave former Vice President Al Gore's environmental group millions of dollars over three years to create a political space for aggressive U.S. action on global warming, according to leaked documents. What does that mean? Let me give you the, uh, the, the uh, correct views of version. He took a lot of money to lie to you and raise your taxes, and he got paid to do it from Soros. Uh, a document published by DC Lake shows Soros, a Hungarian-born liberal financier, in other words, somebody who escaped the Nazis and now wants the world to be run like the Nazis ran it. Now, without, I don't mean the genocide, I just mean the socialism. Wanted his nonprofit Open Society Institute, OSI, to do more to support global warming policies in the U.S. That included budgeting $10 million in annual support to Gore's climate group over three years. U.S. programs, global warming grants, U.S. programs became engaged on the global warming issue about four years ago. Look at this. At George Soros' suggestion, reads a leaked OC memo. Right, they have to leak it because they don't want this to get out because you might actually wake up and realize that you've been lied to and taxed for nothing. There has been a budget of $11 million for global warming grants in the U.S. program's budget for the last several years, the memo reads. This budget item captures George Soros' commitment of $10 million per year for three years to Al Gore's Alliance for Climate Protection, which conducts public education on the climate issue. In other words, they lie to children and adults in pursuit of creating political space for aggressive U.S. action. That is taxing you for something that isn't happening. <sighs> Miserable thing. It's right there in black and white for crying out loud. This is interesting here because uh, <laughs> slowly but surely being fed up. And if we are going to be forced into a federal government that is against the Constitution, then the legal right of secession may in fact be something that we're looking into. And if it sounds... Um, it's, simply, it's simply the logical flow that things are going to go in as the Constitution is eviscerated. And it's happening, you can say, by the will of the people. But that's not true, because it's happening by an ever-growing number of people who want something for nothing on the backs of the people that are working. And sooner or later, the working people are going to create a big stir. And one of those stirs may come in the form of uh, active secession. So here we go. This is from uh, Shrone.com, C-H-R-O-N. I think it's our first time on the show. Welcome aboard. Poll three out of five Texans who support Trump want secession. Hillary becomes president. That is to be their own country, the country of Texas. If anyone needs proof that the presidential race between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton is truly divided in the country, they should look at Texas. According to poll results from the public policy polling released Tuesday, 
three out of five Texans who support Donald Trump said they support seceding from America if Hillary Clinton becomes president. Can you blame them? I mean, for one thing, look at the Second Amendment and look what that means in Texas. Date from the left-leaning data from the left-leaning polling firm who shows that Trump leads Clinton by a margin of 50% to 44% in Texas. This is far from the landslide win from Mitt Romney in the 2012 election. Four years ago, Romney beat President Barack Obama 57.2 to 41.4%. And according to the polling results from PPP, only one out of four Texans supports, supports seceding from America generally. But when faced with the possibility of President Hillary Clinton, a majority of Trump supporters said that they'd rather leave. And I, let's face it, when you look at uh, some of the other questions that have been given by the PPP, it discovered that 30%, about one in three Republican primary voters, voted bombing Agabas. So it's a fictional city. But that's not the point. The point is, they're trying to do anything they can to make a joke and make you laugh and not take Donald Trump seriously because they're worried you're actually going to vote for him. And if you do, then your country might flourish again. You might have things like jobs, and you wouldn't want that, would you? No. Why would you want to do that? Friends, all of this is brought to you in part by Sticker Junkie. There's more coming. And uh, that's going to be brought to you by Sticker Junkie as well. So what I need you to do is to click on uh, this link here that I'm showing you. Get your stickers made. They're going to look amazing like these ones here. And uh, guess what? You're going to get a discount on checkout when you type in the correct views. The correct views. You're going to get a discount because you're a listener of the show. And that's from Sticker Junkie. So go there and get amazing stickers. Right.i is. I think it's the first time they've been on the show, too. Another deep underground military base. Google Maps shows something hidden under the Gulf of California. Now, you got to take this kind of thing with a grain of salt because it could be a number of different things. Um, it's hard to say if that's what this is. But while the UK Sun is reporting that UFO spotters claim this is a giant alien city, I will, it makes the whole lot of sense, if it is anything, that it might be the outlines of a deep underground military base or dump. That's kind of funny. Um, there you can see it. You guys decide for yourself. You know we don't do, uh, we cover the news when it happens with aliens and with hidden bases and, uh, you know, the underneath uh, the airport in Colorado, I believe, where they, uh, I guess Denver, where they think there's a huge base. We cover it. I let you make your own decisions because I can see both sides of it. But this here is weird as hell. I don't have to be a, 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 a great geologist to tell you that's a bit strange. It says it almost looks like an airport, doesn't it? As reported just a few weeks ago, the military be began discussing under-ocean military bases back in the 1960s. It says, for example, in 68, the Stratford Research Institute discussed the construction of dozens of underground bases. It said the study was titled Feasibility of Manned in Bottom Bases. And it's important to show you the abstract here because it clearly reveals that the military-industrial complex was considering and what they could do within their technological reach at the time, more than four decades ago. So if they thought it was possible back then, and they said it would, uh, it said the cost of the experimental phase, called here a demonstration program, could be surprisingly modest, about one half billion dollars spent over 15 years. Um, considering it was published by the American Institute for Aeronautics and Aero, and, and aeronautics and astronautics nearly 50 years ago, there's absolutely no reason to think that it hasn't been able to accomplish that now. Um, it is interesting. It says, let's face it, the military has been rolling out the old alien excuse to cover up anything it wants to do in sequence since Roswell. In other words, there's a real good chance that a lot of what people are thinking are aliens are, in fact, our government wanting to use aliens as a... Uh, as a decoy, so that we don't actually catch the fact that uh, right in front of us there are very frightening things afoot from the military. And that brings us, friends, to the dumb D of the day. Now, I'm going to go ahead while I do the dumb D of the day here and let the, let the dumb D music play for a second and get you ready for um, 
some fun this summer. I mean, it's, it's only August 17th. There's still summer left. And uh, where are you going to want to go? Well, you're going to want to go to Cedar Point. You're going to want to go to Sandusky maybe and see the races that are happening out here. Maybe you want to go to uh, the Ghostly Manor, one of the best animatronic haunted houses in the world. It's year-round opened up there. All right, well, let's take a real good look here at the Hotel Breakers. It's the most popular hotel in uh, in uh, Sandusky, one of the most popular hotels uh, maybe in the entire country, if not the world. One of the great resorts of our time. Well, let's see what they're going to charge. You're going to be paying... Uh, where, where, oh, they took it away. They took it away. Hold on. So we're going to go ahead and scan this real quick. We're going to look. We're just going to pick a random day here. How about the 31st? Perfect. You're going to stay at the, at the Breakers? All right. You're going to spend $211, $265. Uh, this is what I'm seeing for the Breakers. All right. You're going to go to, uh, to the Seacrest Motel. You see this right here? Seacrest Motel. $69. And guess what? You're going to save even more money when you tell them that you're a listener of the correct view. So I need you to do me a favor, and I need you to go and do those things and enjoy. Enjoy saving a lot of money on, uh, on the correct view here. And that brings us to Louder with Crowder, the dumbie of the day. LOL. Army opens combat roles for women. Guess what? Women don't join. Why? Most women, despite what the clipped-haired, butch-faced, angry-faced feminists want you to believe, do not wish to be <laughs> fighting combat. While it's okay for some that may want to sign themselves up for something that they're most likely ill-equipped for, uh, don't, and I'm not insulting women, I'd be ill-equipped for it too, um, no one wants to do it, and it was such an outcry. That the, that the army do this well let's, let's look at the facts here i love crowder because he's, he has the best way of giving facts maybe of anybody except maybe milo remember how every feminist and her lesbian mom were making a big stink over female combat roles eventually they got their way and ladies were extended an open invitation into the combat world you can see women in combat marines now forced to undergo unconscious bias training as the rules got changed up, it says, so tiny Tina could waltz onto the battlefield. Except now it turns out that women don't really want those opportunities after all, because hardly any of them signed up. The Army's top enlisted leader says that there are not enough female NCOs and officers looking to transfer to combat arms jobs. Imagine that! Shazam, Sparky! Sergeant Major of the Army... Dan Daly wrote on Moonday in a memo to the force, Unfortunately, we have not had a su sufficient number of serving female officers, soldiers, excuse me, and non-commissioned officers volunteer to transfer into these mentorship and leading roles. In other words, it's unfortunate that more women don't want to do what is a man's job, whether you want to hear it or not. Um, am I saying that there are no women that would be good at combat roles? No, but it's such a small number that the outcry simply wasn't worth it. It goes on, I know we have female soldiers with the drive and ability to be successful in ground combat arms formations. I am personally asking you to consider transferring to these select combat arms specialties. Yeah, you know, because uh, we already know that the Obama administration, with Clinton at, uh, uh, at the uh, driver's seat through much of it, uh, funded the people that later became ISIS. Putin has mentioned this. The NATO alliance knows that this to be true. And yet, <laughs> women are crazy for not wanting to go over and be raped and beheaded. Um, again, they're going to be targets more than men are if that was to be the case. And women aren't stupid for the most part. They know this. Um, I don't mean that women aren't stupid for the most part. I mean women aren't stupid, comma, for the most part. They know this. You, know, you have to say it or people in the comment line are going to flip out. Since Carter's decision to lift the last of the gender-based restrictions on military service, the Army has taken a leader-first approach to integrating its all-male units. This means seeking to put in place female officers and NCOs before integrating new junior soldiers. So let me make this super clear, he writes. Women don't want to be in combat. Does that mean that there's no butch cutted she hawks interested in combat jobs? Of course not. They're just not enlisting. As for the one girl who did sign up, well, she changed her mind, and there's a link to that too. She's now AWOL. 
And really, is it all that surprising? The vast majority of women aren't cut out for these roles, especially the pudgy feminists who push for them. Not enough free tampons or paid period leave, which is a link here. Plus, combat, war, battles and stuff, more of a guy thing after all. Turns out, uh, ladies who aren't signing up for combat. Maybe when push comes to shoveling foxholes, the girls weren't all that keen to get their battle on. He closes with, look, nobody is saying that women shouldn't be allowed to do things, besides Parallel Park. We're simply pointing out that this policy change was unnecessary. It's clear that women don't want to be in combat roles. No matter what the feminist woolly mammoths are saying, now women are expected to be in combat, where apparently they never wanted to be in the first place because this article kind of proves it. Action meet reaction. That's the point that feminist dingbats miss while they were busy flying at the glass ceiling. Excellent article from Stephen Crowder there. And uh, you heard about it. Where, where did you get to hear that article at? You heard it from... And you can donate to the show and help me do a better show. Help me get uh, a decent camera. Help me in a number of ways by donating at the correct views of hotmail.com. Go there, send me an email, I'll let you know where to send any donation. All money you give me goes towards a better show. I show which seats on air anytime this happens. Also, um, I need a camera. That'd be great to have a camera that doesn't suck. Imagine that. Uh, you can look at Patreon. If you don't want to go to Hotmail, look at Patreon in my description. Um, it shows how you can give me uh, some support every time I post videos. And that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless. And thank you for listening to The Correct Views. If you haven't hit share and subscribe by now, please do. And the like button on the way out.